Well, good morning, guys and gals in Interwebs land. Welcome to another episode of Miyagi Mornings. Um, today, someone on the MeWe uh, post about Miyagi Mornings asked about, could I say more about why you shouldn't feed birds that you use in your laying flock for eggs, feeds that contain soy? <clears throat> and uh, a gift happened. I, I love having collective intelligence, right? When it's actually intelligent instead of a Twitter mob going after somebody for not being woke enough. And somebody in that thread posted a link <clears throat> to an article by a company that makes a non-soy feed, to be clear, so they obviously are selling non-soy. But that article referenced a study by someone who thinks this is a good idea to put soy into laying birds, because they think that Soy isoflavins at higher concentration in egg yolks is a good thing for you to eat. So, we have two competing ideologies, but one ran, and I read the study, it's a very well done study, and their hope was to prove that you could modify the diet of a bird, and that modification would either put more soy isoflavins, and hence phytoestrogens, we'll get into it in a second, into an egg, and at the absence of that, those eggs would not have phytoestrogens, soy isoflavins, in them because, well, you didn't put them there. And they want to know how long did it take for this to happen. Well, cut to the chase on the study. It's about 10 days. In about 10 days of feeding soy to your birds, you will see a significant concentration of soy isoflavins, which is, contains phytoestrogens, in the egg yolks, and in the animal's liver and kidneys. Keep that in mind. Okay. If you took the animals off this, it very quickly went away. In about 10 days, it was almost undetectable. Again, I'll link to the study and the article in the video notes below. So we know that if we don't feed a duck or a chicken or a quail soy, that their eggs do not contain isoflavins, and phytoestrogens. That only when we feed them soy, or maybe something else that contains a, a, a phytoestrogen, does that happen. So let's just start off from a basic understanding of what that means. That means since ducks and chickens and quail do not run around in their natural habitat looking for and eating soybeans, that we already have an unnatural product. That this, that this product that we have consumed as food for as long as humans have been able to figure out what comes out of a bird's ass, crack it open and eat it, is not supposed to have this stuff in it, flat out. It's just not supposed to be there. And I've checked, and I could be wrong, but this old redneck hippie duck farmer here was say, unable to find any examples of any wild birds used by humans for eggs that contain phytoestrogens. I, I, I'm not saying none exist, I'm telling you I couldn't find any. And there's lots of cultures all over the world that go out and collect wild birds. From the Inuit up in, in northern parts of Alaska into the Sahel region of, of Africa and everything in between. There's indigenous societies that use wildly gathered eggs and I can't find any of them that have this in it. So it seems like that's not supposed to be there. Now let's take it to the next level. What is a phytoestrogen? What some people have been led to believe, maliciously I might add, is that a phytoestrogen is like a precursor to estrogen. It is a thing from which estrogen can be made. It is not. It is not what it is at all. A phytoestrogen is a substance that is chemically so close to estrogen that it behaves like, looks like, and acts like an estrogen. And the human body has estrogen receptors, both men and women, do have estrogen as a hormone in our body. Men have a very little bit of estrogen and a lot of testosterone, and women generally have a lot of estrogen and a little bit of testosterone, because whether you believe this or not, or like to hear this or not, the science is clear that there are two genders, okay? And this is something that's important medically, and from a health perspective, because a man's not gonna get ovarian cancer, right? And a woman's not gonna get testicular cancer, just to make it that blunt. So this matters, and when you, consume phytoestrogens from soy products and any other natural product that contains them. When that gets into your body, you have hormone receptors that are designed for estrogens to attach to and perform their function. And the body can't tell the difference at all between a phytoestrogen and a naturally produced estrogen, and hence it bonds with that receptor 
and performs the functions of estrogen. Now, we've already determined that the human body produces whatever estrogen it needs. Very simple to understand, right? We somehow have functioned with the limited amount of estrogen a man needs and the, the significant amount of estrogen that a woman needs for our entire existence, possibly millions of years, without eating soybeans. Humans did not eat soybeans until the mid-1900s in any quantity. I'm sorry, we just didn't. It wasn't a thing. They realized they could make money with it as an agricultural crop, and it became a thing intentionally. All right. So, let's just think about this logically. I've been saying this for years, that this gets concentrated in eggs. And I now have proof. It's actually a study from 2009, so it was always there. I just never bothered because I didn't think it was necessary to prove something as simple as if you have an estrogen and you put it into a bird and that bird lays an egg, which essentially is an ovum that's developed from ovum to egg, there's only one place that animal is highly likely to concentrate that extra estrogen, and that is in the ovum. It just makes sense because that's part of how females use, use estrogen. Okay, what does estrogen do? What is the purpose of estrogen, specifically in the female body? Well, it regulates the progress through puberty. So as women progress through puberty, they develop their breasts, they develop a little bit on the rear end so that they're more attractive to males, because that's a thing, guys, it is. Um, and they move toward menstruation. They develop hair in strange places, like the funny bunny taught us, right? Okay, when that's going on, it's estrogen that regulates that. And when they progress to full womanhood, they go into where they're, they're, they're menstruating and they're capable and they're running a cycle and they're capable of having children, it regulates that cycle. And when they come into menopause and out the other side and they no longer are capable of bearing children, it wanes significantly because it's no longer necessary. For some women, this gives them problems and we'll come back to that. For some women, most women, it doesn't if their diet is right and they're healthy not all some don't get pissed at me women okay now conversely the counter hormone for this for men is testosterone and that's what makes men have these arms that are more defined if we eat well I don't lift weights right and, and I have this look to me now since I lost weight and started eating mostly meat my testosterone levels way way up you can test it and measure it and that's what men are supposed to have significant testosterone levels women are supposed to have significant estrogen levels and it's supposed to decline as women pass through menopause this is science if you say you trust science then you need to trust this this is no doctor with a brain would ever argue anything i've said so far so then let's just think about this let's say you were the parent of a strapping young man about 14 years old and he was starting to kind of develop a little bit getting a little chinny chin hair Stinking a little bit more from sweating, putting on a little bit of, you know, muscle up in the upper body, the gangly, you know, long gait, clumsy stage. You're starting to go away. He's going through puberty. You notice you take him out and a pretty girl walks by and he doesn't want you to know, but the head turns and he's, he's progressing like a young man is supposed to. He's noticing girls. He's looking like, a, he's, like he's looking like exactly what is a boy physically transitioning into adulthood. And you take them to the doctor for a well checkup because you believe in stupid shit like that. Letting a doctor tell you what to do with a perfectly healthy kid, which is basically nothing, right? And your doctor says, you know what? I have an idea. Here's some pills. Start giving them these pills every day. You go, what are these pills? And you go, it's estrogen. And you go, isn't that the female hormone? You go, but you know what? He would just be better off with some extra estrogen in his body. Now, if you had an IQ above 80... You should see, wah, wah, wah. this guy's a freaking quack trying to turn my young man into a girl, and you should leave that doctor and probably report him to the medical board. Again, I think anybody with IQ above about 80 that hasn't been blindsided by woke bullshit would say, absolutely, this is criminal behavior. You don't do this. Okay. So you people that get all woke and start dumping massive amounts of soy milk any of your kids' milkshakes or whatever, feed them soy ice cream, and feed them eggs that are laden with this shit, that's what you're doing. You're adding estrogen because your body can't tell the difference. This is medical fact. Conversely, you have a young girl, 14, 15 years old. She's starting to develop. She's looking good. She's noticing that young man, right? Everything about her life is progressing the way it's supposed to. She's moving into menstruation and all. She's doing everything that we expect a young girl to do as she transitions into womanhood. 
And your doctor says, you know what we should do? We should load her down with some extra estrogen. Maybe not as alarming as doing it to a boy, but don't you think that's a dumb thing? Her body is clearly making exactly the amount of estrogen necessary to progress her into womanhood. Why would you give her more? It's a hormone. It's a hormone, and you're giving her a phytoestrogen that the body cannot tell a difference of. This is also criminal behavior. Now you got a woman, about 28 years old, got one kid, trying for another one. Everything's going well. She looks like a woman. She acts like a woman. She talks like a woman. She's happy with her husband. They have a great, you know, sex life. Everything's good. You gonna pump her up full of extra estrogen? Why would you do such a thing? You got a guy, he's 28 years old, he's going to the gym, he's pounding the weights, he's looking good, he's healthy. You gonna give him estrogen? Only if you're a moron. Who is the only person that it would ever make sense to add this hormone into their body? Someone deficient in it for their period in life. So a woman may go into menopause and you, I think most of the time, I can't prove this, most of the time I think it's due to bad life decisions, but it may not always be, where their estrogen level crashes so much they, they need a little more. And you know what we usually do? We give them estrogen in the form of phytoestrogen from plants as estrogen therapy. Okay, I'll bite. That makes sense. So maybe if you're like a 60-year-old woman that's, that's postmenopausal who's having issues with this, instead of rubbing plant cream on your hands, maybe eating soy-laden eggs is a good idea. How is this a good idea for anybody else? Where does it ever make sense to start, when it's not deficient, dumping excess hormone into the human body and, and, and just fucking with our endocrine system? It doesn't ever make sense, does it? You have, to, you have to be blind to this. Now, I'll tell you why no one tells you this. Because we've been doing this for so long now that people assume if it's got the stamp of the government on it and it's something we routinely do, it can't be a problem. No matter what it is, they think it's okay. But a cursory examination of the facts here would tell you, this is a bad idea. And if you look at the testosterone rates in young males, 25, 35 years old, that range, where it should be at like its highest, so that they can be the men that we need them to be in society, it is a fraction of what our great-grandfather's testosterone level was. And it's not all soy, but it is directly related to diet, and pumping up estrogen is going to decline testosterone. It doesn't belong in a young man. It doesn't belong in a middle-aged man. It doesn't belong in a man at all beyond the little tiny bit of estrogen we need because it does perform some functions in our body. And it does not belong in a woman's body at any age in elevated levels beyond what her body naturally produces unless she has a deficiency in it. So why are we doing it? Because it's cheap and it's high in protein. If you gave me a choice, I can feed my birds organic feed that's soy-based or a non-organic and even has some GMO in it that is soy-free. I will take that one over this one. GMOs go to a whole new place. We'll talk about that in a future episode, why it's worse in soy than it is in something like weed or corn. And it has to do with how often it's sprayed, why it's sprayed, and what it's sprayed with as far as the herbicides go. But anyway... If you still think this is a good idea, I would love to hear from you as to how it makes sense to elevate estrogen levels in men or women beyond what their body needs. Go ahead, explain it to me. I know they told you soy isoflavins are good for you. What else have they told you is good for you? I'll catch you with another episode tomorrow and we'll wrap up the week.